Hello everybody, Jonathan Pola here with West Coast Weather. Today is April 20th and we're going to talk about this potent cold front that's starting to approach the Washington, Oregon, Southwest BC coastlines with the associated low pressure system. This is going to bring some gusty winds, um, a quick uh, transition to rain and rain showers as there's all very warm temperatures and plenty of sunshine right now, but this is going to quickly change over the next few hours as this cold front blasts through the area. There's also going to be an isolated chance of a thunderstorm, especially in the Puget Sound area and extra, especially in the the northern Puget Sound area where a convergence zone looks the form as we go through later this evening and into the overnight hours but chances look rather slim with that but there is a chance of that then some isolated showers and maybe another thunderstorm or two is possible on Sunday as well as this um, unstable atmosphere behind the cold front starts moving out. plenty of showers over the region through Sunday then we dry up Monday and Tuesday before another um, trough of low pressure looks to set up over the Pacific Northwest starting on Wednesday and Thursday and a cooler pattern looks to continue on after that so I hope everybody finds these videos enjoyable and, for and informative. Just please hit the like button, subscribe buttons down below to just help the support the channel out. And let's get right into the forecast. Now we're looking at general ridge and trough positions on the European on the left and the GFS on the right. This is giving us a good view of how good the models are in agreement. And you can see as of right now, they're almost exactly the same, which is to be expected as both models have very good data they're running off of. But they will likely have some differences as you go out into the future. Now looking at um, later Sunday morning, you can see that this um, trough of low pressure starts moving into the Pacific Northwest, gliding all the way in the Southwest BC. This is moving rather fast, which is why that cold front is kind of start. It's, it's starting out very sunny in Western Washington, but it's going to quickly transition the full clouds and rain and breezy, the gusty winds over parts of the area very quickly. This kind of skirts out of the area as we go through later on Monday leaving a slightly chillier atmosphere over western Washington Oregon but most precipitation should be done by Sunday evening then we get a transient ridge that starts the building over it's this little weak ridge that kind of builds in between the next trough and this trough but you can see that they're, they're starting to see some differences showing up in the malls the European mall has a weaker trough that kind of stays farther north while the GFS has, has a more potent trough that would bring more impacts more precipitation likely and a low pressure system into the Oregon coastline as we'll see in a little bit we can see both have this trough moving through so there is going to be a chillier pattern um, coming in later Wednesday in the Thursday with some scattered showers around nothing too crazy but then you can see both malls open up this trough different placements but generally the same pattern with a trough opening up over the interior western United States this will enter this will enter us into a cooler uh, weather pattern but you can see the European mall opens up this really deep trough over the Pacific Northwest all the way out into the Rockies this would bring even more even cooler temperatures and more winter like weather um, as we go through late the last week of April but you can see the GFS doesn't have that so we'll continue to look at that as we go now looking at the European mall this is a uh, Washington Oregon California over here Hawaii's down here British Columbia's up here this is looking at the six hour precipitation type and sea level pressure you can see our low pressure system developing that we saw in satellite bringing that cold front and some showers through the area and some beneficial mountain snows not expecting too much with that though and you can see all the showers die off as we go through later in the sunday night and drying us out on monday and tuesday but as we go through wednesday in the uh, thursday you can see some showers starting to regenerate over the area maybe a potential convergence zone as this low pressure system moves eastward and then you can see that the european mall brings this very weak low pressure system to the oregon coastline and we'll look here in a second at the gfs which shows a stronger low pressure system and then this and then the European Mall also brings another strong cold front through the region as that strong um, um, trough of low pressure moves southward. The GFS does not have this, however, so we're just going to have to keep an eye on this as we go. And if I go over the, the GFS right now, we can look at that. 
stronger low pressure system that starts moving in on Wednesday and the Thursday. This would bring almost a bit of an atmospheric river feature in the Oregon. This would bring some substantial precipitation for this time of the year. And it kind of glided down into California. This would be a pretty potent April storm system. So we'll have to keep a really close eye on this as we go through um, the later half of next week. Now looking at the lightning flash density, this is like taking a closer look at the Pacific Northwest. Here's Washington, Oregon, Northern California. Here's Western Idaho, here's Southwestern BC. And as we go through later this evening, watch this little blip that pops up right over Island County in Western Washington. This convergence zone looks to form as some westerly winds come down the Strait on the Fuca and some southerly winds come up through the Puget Sound and they kind of, mer they kind of um, collide right over the Island County area, including parts of Port Townsend and uh, Port uh, Ludlow out there. But there is an isolated chance of the thunderstorm. I'm not really expecting too much with this and the thunder may not happen, but there is going to be a convergence and sets up a bit how strong is still in question and then you can see that there's a couple of very isolated um, lightning chances on Sunday, but really the main threat is with that convergence zone Saturday, Saturday evening. Now looking at the composite reflectivity on the H triple uh, triple R model, this is basically what the model thinks the radar is going to lo look like. So currently at about 11 a.m., you can see that this cold front is approaching the coastline. And as we play this through, you can see it's a rather narrow band of rain. So we'll only get like maybe a couple hours of light, the moderate rain, potentially some heavier rain in some of those um, heavier bands. But then as we get, as this cold front moves through, you can see this convergence zone that starts forming over Skagit, Snohomish, and Island counties. Just how potent and how widespread this convergence zone forms is really just going to, we're going to have to look at that this evening on the radar. But there is going to be a conversion zone. All models agree on that. And then you can see the post frontal showers that continue all the way through Sunday. There's some heavier cells that could have an isolated chance of a rumble of thunder, but really the main threat is going to be some um, moderate to heavy rain and some of those showers. Some hail, some small hail could be possible as the atmosphere is relatively cold. Now, the looking at the NAM 3 cam, it also has a very similar picture, maybe it, with um, the convergence zone also setting up. It has a much weaker convergence zone, which is typical for the NAM to show this. So, but it's still showing that convergence zone, which is the most important thing, with the potential for some showers continuing all the way through Sunday evening. Now looking at the 10 meter wind gusts on the H triple R model, you can see these east winds are kind of warming the atmosphere as those um, downslipping winds dry out and warm the atmosphere. And these east ones will continue before they turn southerly as the cold front moves through. There's going to be uh, about a one to a two hour period of very gusty southerly winds over Island County and most of the Puget Sound with some gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour. Some isolated gusts up to 45 miles per hour. 45 miles per hour is possible for the Whidbey Island area. And then you can see the westerly winds also come down and meet the uh, southerlies right over Island County. There's going to be some gusts up to 40 miles per hour possible with that westerly surge. And you can see these breezy winds kind of continue through the evening before dying down on Sunday. Now look at the NAM 3 cam, a very similar picture with lighter winds, but that's pretty typical. I do expect it to be at least a couple 40 mile per hour wind gusts for the Island County area especially. Now looking at surface space cape, this is basically how much thunderstorm energy there is in the atmosphere. You can see as this cold front moves through, there's um, some thunderstorm energy that starts popping up over western Washington, especially where that convergence zone is right over Island County. So this is why we have the isolated thunderstorm chance and there's some more um, cape also on Sunday as well, which is why some of the isolated thunderstorm activity may continue into Sunday. Now looking at the two meter max temperature um, for today, this is Saturday, you can see some temperatures potentially getting up into the 70s for the Seattle and Portland metro areas before that um, cold front moves through and the high temperatures are going to be within the next hour or so. And this is at I'm recording this at 1130. You can see even um, some places all the way up in the Fraser River Valley getting close to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty warm day today. But you can see on Sunday, the high temperatures hardly get towards 60 degrees for most places with only some low to mid 50s possible for near the coastline. You can see some 60s out east as well. We kind of warm up a bit on Monday and Tuesday with some uh, 
upper 60s possible for the Portland and Seattle metro areas. Also, chance of some 70s as well, especially out east with some middle 70s possible with Eastern Oregon getting in the upper 70s in some locations. Now I want to show you the three hour two meter temperature change on the GFS. You can see as we go through um, later this morning, the early afternoon, we the temperature is really warm up warm up about 17 degrees in um just three hours on for some of the locations but watch as this cold front moves through you can see the there the temperature is going to be dropping nearly 15 to 25 degrees fahrenheit in less than three hours most of this is likely going to happen in the one the two hour time frame so quite the weather whiplash that is going to be expected this evening as the cold front moves through now taking a quick look at california um they're going to be mostly dry weather over the next couple of days maybe some isolated showers and thunderstorms over the southern Sierra Nevada but really not expecting much with that and as we go through later on Monday Tuesday and Wednesday really not that much maybe some showers and ice with thunderstorms popping up later on Tuesday as a low pressure system kind of moves east into the interior Rocky Mountains and that also will revive once again on Wednesday and potentially on Thursday as well, maybe even more on Thursday. We're going to have to look for that potential um, strong trough to move down as the European model shows next weekend, which could bring some impactful weather to California. But now looking at the daily two Mac. Uh, daily max two meter temperature on the national blend of models this is for saturday today you can see plenty of temperatures in the 80s generally only a couple degrees above average this is pretty typical for california this time of the year as summer starts approaching you see the desert southwest getting well into the 90s potentially over 100 degrees in death valley down here now look on sunday and monday the temperatures will even warm up even more with temperatures getting in the 90s for parts of the central valley of california death valley and parts of the de desert southwest over 100 degrees and generally um, a cooler pattern looks to be expected at later next week as those trust of low pressure start moving through now looking at a graphic from the national weather service of spokane you can see that there's gonna be some gusty winds out east later tonight and in the early sunday morning with some gusts at up to 45 miles per hour with southwest winds 15 to 30 miles per hour sustained winds will remain strong through sunday afternoon but the strongest will come with the cold front late saturday night slash early sunday morning so just make sure that secure outdoor objects if you're out east and out west as well now looking at a graph from the national weather service of sacramento california this is talking about how we're going to get these very warm temperatures over the next week the air may be warm and pleasant this week but the water will be cold and fast please be smart and stay out of the area waters yeah those streams and rivers are going to be running pretty fast as the snow melts this time of the year and the, the water is also still very cold as um the waterways have not been able to warm up because of uh, we're just entering in the middle of spring. Now looking at the long range forecast, this is a six to 10 day temperature outlook from the National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center. This is valid from April 25th through the 29th. You can see generally normal to below normal temperatures for much of the West Coast as that troughing looks to set up at, on the last week of April. Also above average precipitation expected during this time frame. Now looking at the eight to 14 day temperature outlook, this is for April 27th through May 3rd. And you can see generally the same pattern is going to um, be setting up as some of the models continue to show that troughing remaining over the west coast which will bring severe weather over the central plains and up into the midwest but there's a lot of disagreement during this time time frame you can see the um, below average precipitation starting to move in the parts of california being favored but generally near normal to slightly above average toward the pacific northwest so still plenty of time to look at this as we go well, that concludes the forecast. I hope everybody is enjoying the nice weather that out there today. Just be careful if you're out on the the um, evening commute tonight, as those um, that as that cold front moves through, there's going to be some very quickly changing weather conditions with moderate to heavy rain possible and gusty winds. So definitely keep an eye out on on the forecast if you're heading out later this afternoon and evening. I just uh, I hope everybody's having a great weekend and. Um, I'll have the next video out likely by next weekend talking about that trough of low pressure that the models are starting to show moving down over the Pacific Northwest. But generally, uh, a calmer pattern looks to be expected through Wednesday after this cold front. But then that first trough moves down Wednesday and the Thursday bringing that cooler weather. And then also the potential for that uh, stronger trough later um, next weekend as the European model shows. But the GFS is also disagreeing with a much weaker trough of low pressure. So. 
I hope everybody's having a great day. Take care. God bless. And I'll talk to everybody in the next video.